the last update for Battlefield 2042 this year is coming out tomorrow as we're recording this and here are all of the patch notes you need to know before you hop in. Welcome. 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 Welcome to Uplink. They have been cranking out the updates for Battlefield 2042, so let's jump in and look at some of the things that they've been adjusting. So starting off, players that are not the party leader can now cancel while waiting in a queue. Xbox crossplay can now be enabled and disabled in the options menu on Xbox. Your sort settings will now be correctly remembered when refreshing the Battlefield Portal server browser. Fixed an issue where loadouts would sometimes be empty on the spawn screen after joining a server, preventing weapon selection. Hallelujah! This is fantastic. I've had this bug so many times, but I did find one of my favorite weapons because of that bug, so <laughs> there are ups and downs to that. They also made improvements to ensure aim assist is more consistent during console gameplay and the ranger's effective combat range and overall health has been decreased. On the audio side of things, we have uh, just two. They made various tweaks to the overall audio experience to improve clarity, distance, and directional perception, and they fixed in issues where soldiers would not always play indoor specific footsteps. I've had that one. Uh, in terms of the weapons, they removed the bounce from underbarrel grenades when firing at short distances. Good to see. The 40 millimeter AP grenades now properly damage vehicles. Excellent. They fixed some weapons displaying wrong ammo counts for specific magazines. The DXR and NTW50 bolt action rifles reload animation has been increased by 0.2 seconds. So apparently there was a little issue where they just needed to adjust it just a little bit. They adjusted the dispersion values for most weapons, which results in a faster dispersion decrease when tap firing or doing short bursts. Dispersion increases for most most weapons uh, now take slightly longer for weapons to become overly inaccurate and sustain fire. Hallelujah. They also adjusted the recoil, value, recoil values to prevent over-aggressive recoil jumps from the AK-24, LCMG, the PKP-BP, the SFAR-MGL, and the PP-29. They also improved hipfire accuracy for all SMGs to make sure uh, to make them better stand out from the other automatic weapon archetypes. LMG dispersion and recoil lower to improve performance and sustain fire. Additional improvements to recoil control for all weapons, more specifically automatic weapons, and they increased close range damage and consistency with the MCS 80 or 880 when using buckshot shell or fletchette shells. And finally, for the weapons, they fixed a bug that caused bullets to be fired below the player's aims on the SFAR GL and the K30. I thought it was crazy with that last one, because I did not know what was happening. Vehicles have been a big complaint for a lot of people, and we have some fixes for some of those. They fixed a bug where a vehicle weapon sometimes did not deal blast damage on a direct hit. And they're introducing the ground vehicle 30 millimeter cannon effectiveness versus infantry. It now overheats faster, has a slightly reduced rate of fire and blast damage, and increased fall off at distance. And the rate fire went from 350 to 330. The heat per bullet went from 0.13 to 0.14. The heat drop off per second went from 0.5 to 0.475. And the blast damage went from 20 to 18. We'll see how these uh, get adjusted. It's always mind-blowing when you see the specifics of these changes because it's like, oh, point, uh, <laughs> point zero two five difference. Uh, the LCAA Hovercraft 40 millimeter GPL grenade launcher, the blast damage was lowered from 55 to 35. And that's good. That's fantastic. Good. Keep on going. The 40 millimeter utility pod upwards firing angle is now easier to use. Excellent. And the EBAA Wildcat 57 millimeter cannon, they removed the dispersion and the ammo went down from 12 to 8. Impact damage went from 85 to 75 and the blast damage went from 70 to 35. The frag grenade has uh, some changes as well. They increased the time to detonate a frag grenade from 1.1 second to 1.4 seconds after the first bounce on a hard collision, and they increased damage of frag grenades across game modes to deal 120 damage and guarantee a kill on armored players too, and they reduced frag and incendiary grenade max ammo count from 2 to 1. On the proximeter, they lowered the spotting radius from 30 to 20 meters, 
and they lowered the uptime from 30 seconds to 14 seconds, as well as lowering the amount of proc sensor a player can carry and deploy from two to one. For Battlefield Hazard Zone, they fixed an issue that caused the roaming occupying forces LATV4 recon to spawn at the wrong times or not at all. And this is the big one for everybody that plays a breakthrough. On Kaleidoscope, they have removed the rooftop capture points and the objectives there. There are now two capture objectives at the bottom in BT large and one at the bottom in BT small. And on Orbital, the rooftop capture objective has also been removed. Hallelujah. There's now a single capture point at the bottom in BT large and BT small, as well as adjusting it on Hourglass. Rooftop capture objective has been removed. There is now a single capture objective at the bottom in BT large and BT small. They also fixed an issue where players were spawning out of bounds. Hallelujah. Just crazy to think, you know. A, a, a capture point where there's only two very defendable ways to get on top of it uh, ended up being an issue. Hmm. Who could have wondered? Who could have guessed? And then finally on the soldier, they improved on backpedaling into objects when being in prone position, as well as they fixed a rare issue where players could turn invisible when spawning on a full or destroyed vehicle. 